Hello, in this video I'm going to be mainly just forming the equations. I'll start sim uh, simplifying and solving some of them but really to do simplifying and solving I've saved those for other videos which you can load up by clicking on the bubbles that have just appeared on the screen. So time to get your notebooks and pencils ready. Let's begin with the first of four examples. A mystery number multiplied by 5 and then added to 4 is equal to 39 form an equation and find the mystery number. Now you're probably thinking well I've played this kind of game before I could do this in my head fair enough but that's not the only skill of a mathematician to be able to do things in your head there are times when you need to be able to display your workings to communicate what you've been doing and there's also other times when the question is so hard that you can't do it in your head and you need to use a bit of help by writing stuff down on paper so it's an important skill we're going to go through that now and that's why I'd like you to be making notes as we go along. A mystery number. Right, for that I'm going to need a letter because I can't keep writing out mystery number. I'm going to choose the letter B as my mystery number. So B, we're working with B. It gets multiplied by 5, so I can write that as 5B, and then added to 4. So here's 4, added on. So far that is just an expression and we've been forming expressions before and you can watch a video on that that's just an expression you can watch a video on that but this is all about making an equation so that we can work out what the mystery number is the good news is we're told in the question that is equal to 39 so 5b plus 4 is equal to 39 and now we have an equation and we can solve that. That's easy. We've solved equations like this before. Not too difficult. Where do I start? I start by subtracting 4 from both sides on this one. And so you get 35 here. You get 0 there. You get a new equation now. 5b equals 35, etc. And you can carry on solving from there. I'm not going to finish that one off for you. That's for a different video. Second example. I love it when there's a bit of geometry. So what does this say? It says the width of a rectangle is 4 and the length is 3f. Hmm. Interesting. I've never seen letters used before in a geometry question. Okay, well let's read a bit more. The perimeter of the rectangle is 62 centimeters. Right. Form an equation and find the value of f. So I'm scratching my head at this point thinking I've not seen a question like this, not sure what to do, but there's probably enough information in the question for me to figure out what I'm supposed to do. Let's have a look. The perimeter. I remember what perimeter means. Perimeter is the distance around the outside edge of a shape. So starting in this corner over here, it's all the way along here, plus this distance, plus this distance, plus that one. Okay, that makes a bit of sense. So in that case, if this is 3f, we've got a matching side over here which is also 3f, and if that's 4, then we've got another side over here that that's 4. How do I know that for sure? I know that because it's a rectangle and rectangles have equal and opposite sides. Right, perimeter. We said it was all about the total distance around the outside of the shape. That sounds to me like I'm going to need to do some adding so if I take this side here, the top, which is 3f, and then I've got this side here, which is 4, so I'll add them together. Then I need to add that side as well, so that's another 3f, and then over here I've got another 4, so I'll add that on as well. So far so good, got myself a new expression, and I know that this expression is the perimeter. Okay, I'm not going to be able to solve and work out what f is until I turn this into an equation. And the question tells me that the perimeter equals 62 centimeters. So drop that in, and I know that the perimeter is equal to 62, so I can write this expression is equal to 62. And we start to get the kind of equation that we can solve. Still a little bit messy, so what I plan to do is to simplify. I've got the 3f there, and I've got the add 3f there so that gives me 6f and then I've got 
add 4 and another add 4 so that gives me add 8 and it's still all equal to 62 I can solve it from there, I take away 8 from both sides I'll let you do the rest and then you can work out what f is and that is an example where we've formed an equation and we've even started to solve it oh hooray another geometry question so the angles in a triangle are d that's strange d add 30 this just gets weirder and d take away 5 what form an equation and find the value of d okay well handily there's a little diagram that's useful if not I'd probably have had to draw one because that would have made my life really difficult otherwise so we've got an angle that measures D apparently I'll label I'll, I'll just color that one in blue just to remind me what I'm talking about this one is D add 30 and this one in the bottom corner that is D take away 5 hmm okay this is all just a little bit confusing for me at this point but wait there's probably something I'm missing the angles in a triangle okay what do I know about the angles in a triangle aha yes the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees aha sneakily they left that off the question and assumed that we would have to remember it which we have good news so if I add the angles together is that what you're saying the first angle D add add in orange add the green angle which was D add 30 add the purple angle which was D take away 5 are we saying that that equals 180 I think we are because this is the three angles added together in other words that's the sum of the angles in the triangle and we're saying that it's 180 brilliant well we're so much closer to getting an equation that we can solve I think the next thing we really need to do is to simplify them simplify this expression because it's a little bit muddly so we've got D add D add another D that's going to give you 3D and then we've got add 30 and take away 5 and they go together so if I add 30 and then take away 5 that's like going forwards 30 steps but then back 5 steps and that is like going forward 25 steps basically okay so going forward 25 steps add 25 right equals 180 aha this looks like the kind of equation I can solve so I would do take away 25 from both sides get 0 there you get 155 here then you've got a new equation 3d equals 155 and you can start to work out what d is the bad news is that d is going to be a decimal or a fraction it's not going to be a whole number but I can work it out amazing okay last example a basketball team won 20 games okay okay I can relate to that the team won two more games than it lost find the number of games won hmm okay so let me just get this right 20 games and it won some and it lost some right so for example let's say it won 18 then it must have lost 2 or if it won 5 then it must have lost 15 because they have to add up to 20 right the number, total number of games that they played but then it says this other thing it says that the team won two more games than it lost so I could basically go through every single combination that adds up to 20 until I find one that has a difference of 2 but that would be a little bit tedious so there's got to be another way well I just need a bit of help trying to understand what's happening here so I'm going to get out my trusty friend the bar model and this bar let me figure out what is it going to represent okay it's going to represent mm, I've got a choice I'm going to make it represent the number of games that the team won that's how many games the number of team won then I'm going to need another rectangle that represents the number of teams the number of games that the team lost 
Uh, let me give that a different colour so we can see what we're talking about. I'll make it blue. No, not you. You. Okay, but this isn't quite right because I know that the number of games that they won, the number of games that they lost, aren't equal. Should I make this rectangle bigger or smaller? So this is the number of games that the team lost. Does it need to be bigger or smaller than the number of the games that the team won? Well, it says that they won more games than they lost, so in that case, this rectangle needs to be shorter, right? Okay. Hopefully you're with me so far. This is the number of games that the team lost. And what do we know about this bit here from here to here? Like the difference between them. Ah, well, we know that that's a difference of two. Hmm, okay. Supposing then we bring in a bit of the final answer. Uh, we borrow some purple for that. The number of games that the team won and the number of games that the team lost together makes 20. Right. Okay, I'm getting somewhere. I feel like I'm getting a bit closer. If this is W, number of games that the team won, number of games that the team lost, I could say is W, take away 2, right? The number of games that they won, but take away 2, and that gives you the number of games that the team lost. Right, and all together, all together, the games that they won and the games that they lost has to equal 20. Right, well, that is starting to fit together nicely. So the number of games that the team won, the number of games that the team lost, you add them together, and that makes 20. Aha! Uh -huh. I have seen this kind of thing before. W, add W, gives you 2W. And then we've got take away 2, which we can't simplify. It's 20. So we have this equation, 2W take away 2 equals 20. Love it. Add 2 to both sides, you do the opposite, you get 0 there, you get 22 there. And so we've got a new equation, 2W. Oh, I can't help but finish this. I'm going to have to solve this. I want to find out the answer. 2w equals 22. So divide both sides by 2, because this was 2 times w, remember, so we're going to do the opposite. Then you get w equals 11. So you're telling me that they won 11 games. That means they lost 9 games. Aha! That adds up to 20. It worked. So they won 11 games, they lost 9. We used algebra to form an equation and to work it out so that we didn't have to do every single combination. Success! Okay, that is the end of the fourth example. That's the end of the video. Feel free to go back and rewind and play the bits that you didn't quite understand. But hopefully that has been useful in helping you learn how to form equations. Thanks! Bye!